This is a Sandy Boy Productions podcast. Hey, everybody. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by Prevenex. Prevenex has clinically effective supplements that promote longevity, performance, and everyday health. If you are looking for a place to get your multivitamins, your supplements, your protein powder, vitamins for your kids, this is where you need to look. Their products are effective. They are clean, clinically tested with proven ingredients. I don't know about you, but for years I spent like time in the target aisle looking for a vitamin that was legit and I never knew what to pick. But now I know the Prevenex is where to go. They have a Joint Health Plus supplement that has ingredients that are clinically proven to offer the most comprehensive and complete joint protection and relief available on the market. I've had so many people reach out to me with success stories from Joint Health Plus. I take it every single day. My body's feeling great. We use their protein powder every day. You all should definitely go check it out. Go to Prevenex.com. Use the code ANOTHER and that will get you 15% off your order. And when you support sponsors of this podcast, you're directly supporting the show. So for that, I thank you. All right. Today, you're listening to episode 330. And my guest is Morgan McDonald, fresh off the Olympics. He ran the 5,000 in Tokyo. He is originally from Australia, lives in Boulder now, and trains with the On Running Training Group under coach Dathan Ritzenhain. He's a four-time NCAA champion. He also competed in the 2017 and 2019 World Championships. So in this episode, we get to hear about his experience in Tokyo, what he's looking forward to, and also he's got a pretty big YouTube presence. You can find his YouTube when you just search Morgan McDonald. Um, Also find him on Instagram, Morgan McDonald underscore over there. All right, friends, if you are enjoying this podcast, please take a couple minutes and just leave a quick rating and review. That would be a huge help in potential new listeners finding the show. We are giving away a pair of Gooder sunglasses to every new review coming in. I'm going to do that through the end of August. So make sure you leave it soon. Um, Shoot Emma, my assistant, Emma at Sandy Boy Productions, an email and let her know you left us a review and we will get you in the drawing your chances to win are really high because there's not too many new reviews coming in, if I'm being honest. Uh, All right, friends. Thanks for being here. And if you enjoy this show, make sure you check out all the other podcasts in the Sandy Boy Productions network. You can go to sandyboyproductions.com to check it out. My website is getting a facelift. So it's kind of not super great right now, but it's going to get better. Don't worry. Uh, But you can learn about the other shows over there on the website. All right. Enjoy my conversation with Morgan McDonald. All right. Well, today on the podcast, we have Morgan McDonald on the show. Welcome to the show, Morgan. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, Congratulations on becoming an Olympian. Thank you. Thank you. How are you feeling? Uh, You know, it's kind of weird. I think post-Olympics, everyone would have very different uh, feelings and <laughs> depending on stuff. I'm right now. I'm feeling really good. I had my Olympics. To be honest, like the race didn't go exactly how I wanted, uh, but I had a great experience there. And now I'm actually on a bit of a break. I'm taking some downtime. So, yeah, I'm really just relaxing, not doing much, and yeah, I'm having a good time. What does a break really look like for you? Yeah, so it it kind of has changed year to year. It depends. Generally, I'm the type of person who like by the time I get to my break. I'm ready for it, and I really enjoy it. Um, in the past few years, I've struggled with taking a break, but this year in particular, I really felt like I needed one at this point. Uh, my body is a little banged up, so um, we're kind of, we're currently getting on top of some of those things and working out like the treatment plan. Um, so, in terms of my running, is gonna my running would depend ex- like on what I need to do to recover from some of these injuries. But apart from that, like the mental break, I'm just just hanging out doing whatever like just enjoying my time like with my roommates and stuff i'm here in boulder right now but i'm hoping to be able to visit my girlfriend she's in she lives in france so hopefully i'll get to visit her at some point i think it'll depend i have a i do have a trip booked i have a feeling i'm gonna have to maybe push it back a little bit if i need to 
um, get some more treatment done here, um, depending on the injuries. But yeah, pretty much just enjoy it. Really like mentally checked out, honestly. So yeah. Um, how long have you and your girlfriend been dating? Uh, like five or six years. Oh, that's a long time. Did you meet in school? Yeah. So we were at Wisconsin together. We met freshman year and yeah, by the start of our sophomore year, we were dating and, um, yeah, we went to Wisconsin. She was on the lightweight rowing team. Um, and then after she's a French American. So then after that, she actually went to France originally to represent France, uh, being on the under 23 rowing team there and then she's stayed she really likes france and she stayed there and is like doing like a master's degree she actually just finished and now she's got like a job there and stuff oh my gosh so eventually you guys are gonna have to like decide yeah. like where are yeah, we I gonna know. land oh, i know it's, it's a tough one you know because obviously no one wants to be in like a distance relationship like it has a lot of challenges and it's it's not fun a lot of the time but um you know with the spots that we're both in like especially me as a professional runner Honestly, like I live a pretty, like by her standards, a very boring life. <laughs> <laughs> like, and uh, I wouldn't want her to like move here for me. And then I'm gone a bunch of the year, and I'm pretty much like at this point, like doing kind of like whatever I got to do to to try to be as good at running as possible. And like, so she's able to kind of do whatever she wants to do and like follow her own uh, passions and interests. So it actually works out pretty well for us right now. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. And I think it's so good that you recognize that too. But you're saying that running and sleeping a lot and just resting all the time is boring? <laughs> yeah, who would have thunk it? I, I, I seem to enjoy it. But then, man, she gets so annoyed at me. Like every time she visits, she's like, man, you literally like do nothing. Like she'll want to like, because when, when I'm training hard, like seriously, you know you know how it is. It's like, if especially I'm running twice a day. Um, I'm doing the training and then I'm so tired in between. I just want to chill out and recover. And then obviously, yeah, going to bed early and stuff. She, If she's visiting, she wants to like go out and do activities and stuff. I, It's like I'm the most boring person in the world. So normally like when we spend our most time together is like obviously when I'm on my breaks and stuff. So we can do it. But yeah, sometimes I'm just like, I'm sorry. Like I just, <laughs> I'm just so <laughs> boring right now. Oh my goodness. I didn't know there was lightweight rowing teams. I didn't know there was like two yeah. teams. Yeah, so it's not it's not nearly as big as uh, like normal rowing, but uh, for both men's and women's, they have they have lightweight rowing. Oh, very cool, very cool. Yeah. Okay, so how long have you been? So so today is is August eleventh. We're putting this out next Friday, but how long yeah. have you been back from Tokyo? Just like three days. Three days. Are you yeah. like still <laughs> recovering from jet lag and things like that? Yeah, a little bit. I think because I'm not running, uh, I'm not nearly as like sensitive to stuff like that. So, like, I just don't really care, I guess, like, being tired in that. But I'm definitely a bit jet-lagged. Um, but, yeah, definitely it was weird because I finished kind of early because I didn't make the final. So I was – I finished, but then I was still in Tokyo for – in the village for, like, a week or six days or something like that. And I wasn't running during that time. But still mentally, you're, like, in the village, you know. You're in, like, a liminal space where, like, it's hard to, like, still switch off. You're so, like, in it. And so – coming back here uh being able to like mentally be away from it has been has been really nice even though you were disappointed that you didn't make it to the final were you able to enjoy that time and like get back in the headspace of i don't know cheering the other australians on or cheering mm -hmm. anybody else from the on running team on yeah definitely it was still an amazing experience being there and being in the village and definitely uh, being back with the Australian team was really fun. You know, obviously, I haven't been back home for Australia for quite a while now. And being in the village for two weeks, it felt like I was back in Australia, honestly, because I was just like, it's just all Australians. We had a really nice setup there. We had, um, we actually had like a couple of baristas, which like they oh, had like, just for our team, like in our building. And like, Fancy. they rent a coffee machine. Yeah, it was so nice. So we just like hang out there. And uh, the Australian running scene is really small in a lot of ways. So, it's a lot of people there that like I've known for years and like really good friends. And so whenever we get to catch up, it's always a lot of fun. So it was really great to be around that. And I was rooming with Ollie, Oliver Hoare, and he was in the 1500 and he was doing really well. He was, we had our heats on the same day and then he had his semi two days later and his final two days after that. So once I got done, I was pretty much just trying to like be there for him and support him as much as possible. Um, so I was still, yeah, very involved and it was still a great time, honestly. So Ollie runs with your team with mm -hmm. On, but he's yeah. also Australian. Yeah, we That's have like. That's kind of cool. It's pretty crazy, honestly. We, uh, 
I worked this out. I think our first team together was when we were nine and ten years old. We we made national cross country and we represented New South Wales because we're both from Sydney in mm-hmm. Australia and we've both been running since a young age. And so, yeah, we, we made our first team back then and then he went to Wisconsin as well. We went to Wisconsin together and now we're here in Boulder together. So it's been pretty cool. Yeah. What are the chances? That's wild. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty awesome. Okay, so as you were talking, I was trying to make note of anybody else from Australia that I've interviewed. Jess Mm -hmm. Hull. Yeah. She had a good race. I I really thought she had a solid shot at making the, meddling in the 15. Yeah, I mean, she obviously, I think in the final, she obviously would have wanted to do a bit better. But in the semis, I mean, she ran so quick, she broke the Australian record. So that's, uh, I mean, obviously, yeah, would have liked to do that in the final rather than the semi, I would say, but still, like, that's an amazing effort, and, uh, yeah, I mean, she's, she's been killing it for a while now, so to see her, like, yeah, get that Australian record, and, like, perform well at the Olympics, that's really awesome to see. She always looks so joyful, like, at the start yeah. line, at the finish yeah. line, even no, during the race, she looks happy. She is. No, whenever you talk to her, she definitely, uh, will brighten your mood, because she just has a big smile, and always a positive attitude. yeah. Um, okay, the other, I'm just telling you this, it might be boring to listeners, <laughs> but the other Australians I have interviewed, Sinead Diver mm-hmm. and Ellie Pashley. Yeah, we, I, I didn't actually get to see them at all because the marathoners were like completely separate. Uh-huh, Sephora. So yeah. I, I didn't get to see either of those guys. Yeah, but Sinead oh. finished top 10, which is amazing. 44 years old, everybody. I know, I know, like, oh, man, <laughs> that's so impressive. Um, yeah. Okay, so moving on from that, I think it's so fun this podcast like to have the opportunity to talk to athletes from all over the world is just mm-hmm. so cool and the fact that you're the fourth australian i'm like that's that's amazing i feel i feel very lucky to be able to have these conversations um let's go back to australia though what brought you to the united states i know you competed at the university of wisconsin won multiple ncaa championships why did you choose to come here yeah so i would say that i knew from a young age like well, I mean, growing up, I, I played a lot of different sports, but when I was about 16, I knew like running was like the sport that I wanted to pursue. And I wanted to try to be a professional runner. And, you know, I had all these big goals and stuff. Uh, but looking at it in Australia, like once you finish high school, once you turn 20 or whatever, like there's not really much there to bridge the gap between like being a good junior and being a professional runner. So pretty early on, like I saw coming to college in the States is like the perfect thing to continue my development and yeah just kind of like the best way to be as good of a runner as I possibly could be so yeah I looked at a bunch of different schools um, as I was in like my last couple of years of high school and uh, Wisconsin was always high on the list and I had been talking to the coach McBurn there for a while and I came on a visit and I really liked it I loved the coaches I loved the team and I loved the town of Madison a lot so I was really excited to go there um but yeah it was mo- it was pretty much for the running and for the college experience all that just like really appealed to me and um yeah you know I always wanted to be a pro runner I thought that was going to be the best way to do it yeah you know it's it is so unique what we have here in the United States with the NCAA and things like that it yeah. just it's like such a big opportunity for athletes yeah. honestly you get like so spoiled it's like as a, as a runner, you're so lucky because obviously it's a weird system and like there's a lot of, you can be pretty critical of like the NCAA in a lot of ways. You know, the football players, the basketball players that are bringing in all the money, obviously they're probably not getting what they deserve. But as a runner on the flip side, you get pretty lucky because you get looked after on a level which like really you're never going to get anywhere. Like even as a professional, it's very difficult to get the same standard that you can get as a, you know, a college athlete at like a lot of the big schools it's just it's amazing so being able to go and take advantage of that was certainly you know I think it had a massive impact on my running career my running journey and yeah I get a lot of like a lot of Australians come over to college now and I would definitely recommend like anyone trying it out because you are very lucky and it is just amazing experience um, I read somewhere or heard somewhere that at some point you told a coach like, hey, what I want to do is make an Olympic team. And yeah. they maybe didn't take you quite so seriously <laughs> right right off the bat. Talk to me about having yeah. that mindset like yeah. before you were good enough to make an Olympic team and how you had that confidence. Yeah, so that was 2016. And um, so I guess I probably said that in 2015. But yeah, I think... Um, one thing that I have always had, which I think a lot of great 
runners and great athletes, great performers have is like kind of a bit of, it's not like ignorance, but it's like you, you think like that you can achieve amazing things even um, if like on paper, like it doesn't necessarily look like you're quite ready to achieve those things. And like as soon as I came into college as a freshman, like um, just like for myself, I wanted to like, you know, try and be like the best runner on the team. I wanted to, like I felt like I should be able to achieve amazing things. And at times like it probably um, didn't work out that well for me because I was, you know, trying to put the cart in front of the horse in times and stuff. But I still think at the end of the day, like that kind of mindset is what um, helped keep pushing me to keep going. And so, yeah, coming into 2016, I, I'm trying to think. My 5K PB was, I don't think it was even under 14 minutes yet. And the Olympic standard was 13.25. And I told the coaches that. And, like, yeah, they kind of, like, laughed at me. They were like, yeah, all right, like, we'll, we'll see. Mm-hmm. I don't think they expected me to, like, even get close. And then um by the end of that year i didn't qualify for the olympics but i ended up with a 13 29 5k pb and i came fifth uh in the outdoor NCAA 5k as a redshirt freshman so that's the year that's the season where i feel like i kind of came through on the college level when i got up to like being able to like compete at the top so yeah having that kind of mindset like i just wanted to try i think it really pushed me to just get literally like everything that i could out of myself and just improve as much as i possibly could for that year and so yeah, that's um, that definitely, I think, helped me a lot. Yeah, it's so interesting to think about, like, if you didn't have that mindset, but you still put the work in that you put in, would you have still co- accomplished the same thing? Like, how yeah. much did the mindset <laughs> factor into it, you know? it's I mean, That's a great question. I mean, I don't think you have to, like, it's, it's never like you have to have any mindset, but I think it's undeniable that uh, the higher the higher level you get in this sport, the more mental it gets. Um, and I think that's true of like performance in like really any realm. And, but it's especially clear in running where, yeah, like at this level, like everyone's good. Everyone's putting in the work. Everyone's trying their hardest essentially, you know, so it does come down to things like having the right mindset for it. And yeah, having the right plan for it. I think mindset, that type of mindset is really important in terms of, I think a big thing in the sport is like the mental um, aspect in terms of like the fatigue that can happen across a season. So say if, um, you know, it's that's why it's really impressive to see like college athletes do well at the Olympics because you would think that by the time they get to the Olympics, like men, like they must have like they've gone through so many highs, like it must be so hard. But, um, you know, if they've like had the Olympics on their mind all year, then to them, it's just like what they've been leading up to all year. That's been that's their peak is the Olympics. Whereas, say, if like you peak at NCAAs and that's the height of your emotion and you put everything into that it's really hard to like come back up and then like still do a lot after that so having that type of mindset i think you know puts you on the right path to be able to like achieve and perform like when the time is right yeah that seems like it would be really hard like for instance if you had a race in like two weeks but then you just mentally peaked in tokyo i think that happens to literally everyone in olympic year where like like obviously olympics is going to be your focus 100 percent, and then once you get done with the olympics there's still obviously big races but i think i don't think anyone is as mentally switched on for those yeah i can't imagine what's your mindset like start line mindset and i know it's kind of a boring question to ask athletes but i was just at the sir walter mile this past weekend and Mm -hmm. um the guy in lane one he jumping up and down a little bit and my kids were right next to me and he gave my son he goes hey i need a fist bump right before the yeah. race and i was thinking yeah. oh he's just like totally chill you know he's about to run his heart out and then yeah. later he kind of mentioned he was nervous and i think that calmed his nerves a little bit so i'm curious like yeah. at the start line what do you, what do you feel like on a you know like a big stage maybe not the olympics mm-hmm. but a sir walter mile type race no like obviously it depends race to race but personally i like to be in a kind of similar mindset to that where like i'm pretty cool and pretty relaxed i'm not like wasting energy on anything but i'm just enjoying it and i'm enjoying like the moment that's that's where i like to try and get to i don't necessarily get to them for every race but yeah by the time i get to a start line normally in my head i'm you know i know i've done everything i can up to that point Uh, i normally am only thinking about like one or two things for the race like normally it's as simple as like stay relaxed for a 5k for example like stay relaxed for the first 3k and then 
start moving up and like making sure I'm like near the front um, for the end. So normally I'm uh, maybe thinking about that race plan, but even not that much. Normally I am like pretty chill and just taking it all in and honestly like not thinking too much is a good thing. And obviously it's not like that can be hard. Like if you're thinking too much and you know you're thinking too much, that's just like not <laughs> I don't I don't know where you go from there. Like that's that's tough. But if you've done everything right and you're in the right headspace, normally for me I like to be relaxed. I like to be enjoying it and yeah, just taking it all in. Um and that's honestly especially at a big race where I know this is the type of thing that I'll only get to experience maybe once, twice, three times in my life. It's like all right, whether it's like positive or negative, like just try to take it all in as much as possible. Well, you in at, in Tokyo, you know, you I know you were disappointed not making it to the final, but you said next time you want to come back and be more competitive in this setting. Um, mm-hmm. And you're f- pretty freshly new with the new group that you've been training with, with Dave yep. and Ritzenhine. What are some things you think that you guys will do to hone in on that fitness and like make sure, hey, in the next four years when we come around to this, we're going to be this much more prepared? I know that's kind of a loaded question. Yeah, no, it, it's a good question, though. It's interesting because um, I've been out of college for like two years now. And obviously, my final year of college, I had I did really well. But in the last two years, like I honestly haven't like had success um, in the way that I want to. Like, I haven't really met like my goals or anything. And I've obviously been trying really hard and stuff, but I haven't had the success. So it's like, like I'm pretty confident that I know what I need to do. But it's not like... Um, of like and i'm confident that i'm like on the right path but i haven't had the results to back it up so to answer that question even before i got on that start line to be honest like i get i get when when i'm there you know i'm like i get in the best mindset possible to race but i already know i already knew that like i didn't have the preparation that i needed to compete with those guys because at the pro level you know everyone is just so good and you know everyone like a lot of people are just putting in this amazing training and if you haven't had that and you've had like some interruptions and stuff like you're probably going to get exposed and that's pretty much what happened to me so you know going forwards I know like that I need a certain level of quality and consistency in my training which is just a higher level than I've been able to achieve so far and I think like with the new group especially like I'm really excited because I just have such a good environment for it um Dathan as a coach is, is so good at uh, making the plan and then the training partners with like Joe Klecker and Ollie and everyone like they just train at such a high level and it's even to the point where I'm not quite there yet and so I know that like especially over these next like the rest of this year I need to kind of gradually build up to the point where I'm able to do the training that it takes to have the success in the races so that's honestly like the main things that like we're thinking about is just like making sure that starting day one like we're on like this plan um to take me to like where we think i need to go to be able to have that success and so yeah i mean right now as i said like i'm i'm enjoying a break and stuff but once i get back into the training like i'll be running a lot you know and it's just like to me it comes down to just like being able to put in more training and that's like what's going to be the thing that makes the difference and kind of gets me to that next level or whatever you want to call it yeah, let's talk about the group. I know that you went and trained with Team Boss for a little bit, and mm-hmm. you know this this training environment makes more sense for you because you have more yeah. male teammates now. But yeah. walk back to why you even went to Team Boss in the first place. What what lured you there, and then yeah. what was the come to where you were like, I really got to be with some more male partners. Yeah, like it, it's interesting because I'm like. I've only been a pro runner for two years, but I've I've been lucky enough to experience like quite a few different environments, and I feel like I've been exposed to a lot, which I think has been really good. So, the original plan for me was I graduated 2019, and then I was staying with my college coach Mick because you know the Olympics were only they were less than a year away at that point, and it was like all right, like we have something that's working here, let's not change it um, with less than 12 months to the Olympics, and so that was the plan. Um, I came back to Madison in 2019. I was training. To be honest, I had a couple of injuries and stuff, so I wasn't in the best shape. But then COVID hit, and there was the postponement. And then it was like, all right, this is like a opportunity. Like, we have a lot of time now. Maybe we will make a change. Because 
coming back to Madison, like things were just kind of different there. Like, and Mick was like very aware of this. Like we were like talking about this the whole time, but I didn't feel like I fit in as much there being a, since I'd graduated, like it was just kind of weird, you know, being with all like the college kids and, mm. um, like, it's not like any, it's not like, I think it was just the reality. Cause like all my friends had like, that I'd gone to school with had like moved away for jobs and stuff. And like the main guy that was going to be training there was, was Ollie, but then he graduated and he signed with the own group and was going to move out to Boulder. So then I was like, well, Boulder clearly is a pretty good spot to be a professional runner. So like, like let's have a look at my options there. And I knew the team boss guys a little bit. I knew in particular Aisha cause we were both sponsored by Under Armour at the time. And I really liked her and I knew a bit about like the way that the group, like they trained and stuff, like how Joe was a coach and I thought it would suit me a lot. And so I called him up, we had a good chat. And so I decided to move out and join the team. Um, that was in maybe June of 2020. And so I came over, we moved down to Boulder in July and I joined the team and it was really good. Um, the instantly, like I, I knew like, all right, this is a much more like professional environment um um being around like a lot of those people like emma that have you know had success for years and like know what it takes was was really good and i had had a couple of good like guy training partners there like nick harris and trip were running there at the time and so the first season was pretty good but then coming back in the fall like the training was great but yeah i didn't really have any training partners anymore because nick was hurt and trip ended up moving to seattle for an internship and so the you know, the training was, was great. Like I, I had like the best fall of training in my life and stuff and everything was going pretty well. Um, but then when was it at the start of this year in February, I got, um, I sprained my ankle and that was pretty challenging for me dealing with that injury, especially like not having like guys around me. I don't know. It was just, it was just hard. And then like a bunch of stuff happened with like the Under Armour contracts and stuff. And so I ended up looking for a new contract and on ended up being like a opportunity for me. And then obviously, yeah, as you said, like the training environment definitely like suited me a lot with on. So it ended up being a move that made sense. I was definitely sad to leave team boss because like I love those people so much. But yeah, by the end, like not having male training partners was definitely challenging. I think like eventually we could have made that work, but I think personally, like doing a lot of solo training during the year was really taxing on me mentally. Like it takes a lot to get up for those big sessions that you need to do uh, when you're just out there solo. So being able to join a group that, yeah, had all that stuff was really, really nice, I will say. But yeah, it was kind of just like the way things played out. And it wasn't ideal timing for me, to be honest, like making that change mid-season. But, you know, it, there's like contracts and all that stuff involved. And um so i'm here now and i'm very happy to be here it's like it's an amazing environment for me but yeah i definitely like i'm still great friends with a lot of the team boss people with all of them and yeah i definitely took a lot from my experiences there so but on's training in boulder too yeah so do you still get to see them every so often yeah, like literally, like just before this, I was like hanging out with some of them. Yeah, that's fun. That's <laughs> good because it's not like you'd like move to a different state and just like we're totally no. plucked from your environment. No, only the transition was probably the easiest transition you'll ever have because I was already living with three of the people. Oh, in nice. Yeah. So it was like a very easy transition to make. Okay, tell me about like having roommates and like what that's <laughs> like, like your roommates being your training partners and and all oh, that. It's amazing. Is we it so fun? Training. We live the dream. It's, it's so good. I mean, we're actually like getting kicked out of our, we're not getting kicked out. They're selling our house, <laughs> which is, which we rent, which is annoying because it's literally like perfect. Like we live next to like some nice trails to run and we have, there's five of us here. We have a dog, we have a cat, and we have a nice backyard. We just like, oh, it's so fun. <laughs> like being a pro runner can definitely be lonely sometimes and you have to be able to like do well by yourself, obviously, because like when you get out there in the race, like it's really just you, but Man, being in an environment like this, it just makes it so fun. And I think that's something which, for me at least, like I probably undervalued like the things it takes to make this sport fun sometimes. And that's obviously like the people and the training partners and yeah, being around these guys constantly, like it, it's it's really good. And you know, we operate, we all like do our own things sometimes, but we all are, like really good friends. And right now, we play a lot of video games together. So <laughs> I saw that. I saw that we, you guys have, were doing that. We have a that. good time. We have a good time. 
Okay, make the case for video games for me because who was it? I interviewed, oh, it was JJ Santana. He's a marathoner. And yeah. um, I have, all my kids are boys. They're pretty little, but they love playing video games. And I'm like, make yeah. the case for video games being okay so I don't feel guilty uh, as a mom. <laughs> no, I, I honestly can't make that case. I'm terribly addicted <laughs> right now. It's like, it's so bad, honestly. Like, it's terrible. I'm so addicted. But uh, <laughs> what, what game are you addicted to? It's called Overwatch. It's like, it's it's like a pretty competitive like online game that we play together and it's like 6v6 and we have like five or six of us that play together so we're a whole team so it is so fun because like you're literally just like hanging out with your friends playing a game even though it's online but you're chatting and stuff so it's so fun but it is by far like the most addicting thing in the world so so you're saying no (laughs) i'm saying no i'm saying i'm saying there's a time and a place so right now I'm on my break. I have nothing else to do on my day. So I may as well do it. That's fine. And then when I'm training hard, if I like need to, because I'm not the best at like just doing nothing uh-huh. a lot of the time. So it is good then if it's like, all right, I should probably like lie down for, like and chill out for two hours. I can easily go play a game for two hours. So it is good then. But if I'm trying to like, for example, in college, I didn't play any video games because I had to run and I had to like do my classes yeah, and stuff. Yeah, like schoolwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if I'm trying to achieve other stuff in life, it's dangerous because then I'll uh, I'll get too addicted and it'll it'll seep into other areas of my life. But yeah, if I'm able to do it at the right time, it, it, it's good. So I don't know if that helps with your guilt. I'm sorry. Well, I actually we actually took them away from the kids a couple of days ago because they kept fighting over them. Yeah. But because they Fair. you know like they want their time and it's just this little switch. But um, here's my question, and it actually I will say. It's always better when we take them away because then if they just know they don't have access to it, then it's like there's no begging for it. There's no fighting over it when it's time to be done, all that. But here's my question. What would you do with that time? Like, what do you think? I I oftentimes ask myself this question with like my guilty pleasure of watching The Bachelor and like really bad TV. I'm like, what would I replace that with that's equally as like relaxing mind numbing like just zone out behavior you know yeah it is tough because like in this current day and age literally there's so much stuff out there which is just too addictive Mm -hmm. it's all too the algorithms are too powerful so obviously if you're taking like video games away but then you're just like sitting on social media it's like well not a good either that's that's no good but if you're if you're able to like replace it with like reading a book obviously that's a great thing or like going for a book yeah, I like to read books, so um, definitely those are the type of things. Yeah, if I'm playing video games, then I'm going to choose my video games over reading. But if I remove the video games, like I'll read more, I'll take more time to like think about what I'm going to like cook for dinner and like go actually buy groceries. So it does actually have a positive impact to me when I when I limit that stuff. I will say. Hey friends, a quick break here to thank Athletic Brewing Company for supporting this episode of the podcast. Are you looking for a delicious craft non-alcoholic beer? If so, Athletic Brewing has your back. They have IPAs, they have golden, they have hazy IPAs, and they also have seltzers that are really delicious. They have variety packs, and they also have a subscription service. So many great things here. Um, I recently got into their seltzers. So good. I got the blood orange seltzer, which is just absolutely delicious, refreshing, and way more fun than drinking plain old water. They do not sacrifice on taste with these non-alcoholic beers. You can enjoy a refreshing drink and still be totally hydrated and feeling good the next day. You all can save when you go to athleticbrewing.com and use the code anotherathletic15. That's another athletic 15. That'll get you 15% off. And make sure you get at least two six packs because then you'll get free shipping as well. And who doesn't like free shipping? Athleticbrewing.com. Use the code anotherathletic15. I know that's a mouthful for 15% off. All right, back to the show. Okay, so back to the training with the group, though. Training with with Ollie and Joe. Um, your five, your five thousand, ten thousand specialists. What? What? I know you ran the five thousand at the Olympics. Yeah. Is that where your home is? Like, is that where you want to hang, or do you like to do the ten thousand? No, definitely the five thousand for now. I'm 
like the type of runner I am right now, like I, 5,000 is my main event, and I like to be able to actually like go down and race quick 1500s as well. Uh, the 10K, I raced one this season. It didn't go very well. I would like to, obviously, I'd like to be good at everything. So hopefully, I'll be able to race good 10Ks as well. Like, I think naturally, I'll move up to being 5 and 10K. That's like the natural progression that I'll go along. But for now, I would definitely like to hold on to like being able to like some speed and racing 1500s as well. Well, listen, I'm going to put a plug in for you to come to the Sir Walter Mile next year then here in Raleigh because that's yeah. a mile race. Hell yeah. yeah. Hopefully, uh, I don't know. It depends what time of year it is because I feel like it's always at a bad time if you're like making like the world champs. And next year we actually have the Com Games as well. So Is that this, is that in the summer? It, they, it was just yeah. this past Friday. Yeah. So, I mean, if I don't qualify for those things, which hopefully I do. Then right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't really want to come, but if it, if if it, uh, it can be a plan C for sure. It's a good. It's, it sounds like a fun backup. Yeah, I love that. Um, but talk to me about training with those guys now that you're like really training with them. Um, yeah. What's the dynamic in the workouts? Like who what who brings what flavor to the workouts? You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I was doing all these workouts on my own earlier in the year, and I like I was doing the best workouts in my life. And I was like pretty impressed. And then I joined these guys and I'm like, man, I wasn't doing anything. Like <laughs> just like how how much more you can push yourself when you're around these people is just crazy. And um, you know, I probably honestly push myself a bit too much. That's why I'm dealing with some injuries now. But I mean that's kind of the reality of the sport that that happens. Uh but yeah, in a workout you have Joe, obviously he like crushes so much stuff. Like if we're doing like K reps or mile reps. It's like it's ridiculous what he's able to do, especially up here at altitude. Like, I wasn't with him for it, but like he was doing like this K rep session. Like I think he did eight by a K or ten by a K, and then four hundreds, and he was doing them in like two forties and quicker. Which, for me, like I, if I thought about running one two forty K, like that's such a massive effort for me. So that is very intimidating. So he is so strong and all that stuff. And then Ollie, well, Ollie's probably the craziest because he can do literally everything because he has this like ridiculous speed uh you know he can run so quick for shorter reps but then he also has the strength like he's able to tr put in high mileage he's a very he's very durable so he's able to put in high mileage and do super impressive tempos and pretty much everything so he's pretty crazy and he's also he's also the type of guy who just like every day just like he'll rock up no matter what, like no matter if he didn't sleep or anything, he just, he'll rock up and just crush. So like between those two, whatever you're doing, it's going to be so honest. It's going to be like, it's going to be on, which is really good to be around. It's really nice. And then Jordy is, he's, he's probably more similar to me. Like he, he is really like, he's very impressive at pretty much everything, but he does things a little more controlled. I would say, which is more how I train, but he definitely, like, we ended a lot of our sessions in the last few weeks with, like, doing quicker reps, mm. and he has the combination of, like, the strength and the speed, so when it gets down to doing those quicker reps at the end of a workout, he, he can go very fast, and we had a couple of times where we were maybe racing against each other a little too much at the end of sessions, but that happens, and then Carlos, he's more of, like, a pure speed guy compared to the rest of us, like, he's, he's the eight. 815 guy and he um he's very quick so if we're doing anything like speed oriented like he'll he'll be at the front and he'll be able to hit those quicker paces for reps that like yeah i would i would struggle with like trying to think of like what it feels like to just like run a 25 200 but like he can do that type of stuff so it's a really nice mix of like guys to train with and it means pretty much like no matter what you're doing you're gonna have someone there with you pushing you and keeping it very honest which is for me definitely what i need i mean the group is making waves. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but like lots yeah. of success this year. I mean, it was, the team was announced, what, was it just last summer? Was it summer of 2020? Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. A, it was like a year ago now and they've done so amazing. Yeah. I mean, I was, I have to just make this note for the audio. I was super heartbroken for Leah. Yeah, that was really sad. That was very, very sad. But I mean, just a true testament to, you know, what Dathan has done with the group and like what, how good his coaching is and like what 
an environment you guys have as a group, just the successes that everybody's had this pa- in just this one short year, this yeah. weird, weird <laughs> year. Um, it just, it's just showing that like, it's going to be a really successful group. It is a good yeah. successful group. Yeah. Well, it it is crazy. And I think a lot of that comes down to like so much of the credit. Most of the credit has to go to Dathan. And then I guess it has to go to on for, you know, giving him the opportunity and, um, the freedom the responsibility but so much of it has to go to Dathan because he he experienced a lot in his running career and so he really knows he has a really strong vision on what it takes to have success as a pro and he believes really strongly in the power of the group and in having putting the right people together with all the same goals and the you know similar motivation and how much better that can make everyone and I think that's really like what you see when you get yeah, you take on both the men's and women's side, just like the amount of success that um, has been had is just, yeah, it, it's it's hard to like fathom because like, I mean, there is some luck involved because like obviously you get someone like Ollie who as soon as he turned pro, he was crushing it. He was like during the 2020 COVID weird year, like he was just here in the US just running ridiculous times. And you can't predict anyone's going to like, make that jump so quickly as a pro like that is so impressive to see um but then yeah you get joe along with that who this year like the jumps that he made as a professional were so large to the point where he made the olympic team in the 10k and like yeah that, like i think last year like when he signed i mean i don't know how many people would have said like yeah he's going to be top three of the trials next year but from the first race of this year like the he's the standard that he took it to was so high and then, yeah, with the women, same thing. Like, Leah, obviously, she's had a pretty challenging professional career in some ways, but the way she was able to make such big improvements this year, obviously, the trials was really tough to watch, knowing everything that she'd been through and how good she was to to stumble like that. And, you know, that's just, I guess that's the reality of the steeplechase. It's, it's brutal. But even, like, that sucks but at the same time like the fact that she was there is so amazing in itself and i think she was really happy with that and then um alicia also making the team alicia is she is like so professional in the way that she operates like we were in wisconsin together she's someone who like you would have looked at and be like yeah she's going to be really good you could have predicted that one but yeah then you just see everyone else like running their best and i think um to have that like so across the board it is really impressive and yeah i think it's a big testament to to dathan and he's uh he's like the most dedicated coach i've kind of ever seen like i mean a lot of it's just like his personality like i think he's crazy he just like can't stop like working he's just so passionate he just cares so much it's like it's it's crazy to see but i think um you know like he gets like just these amazing results yeah. so yeah it's awesome to be part of it you know, you mentioned Ollie having like such great success as a pro and I'm curious from your own experience, like coming off uh, NCAA cross country win in 2018, four or three NCAA wins in 2019, like how do you transition from like being on the top and like you being yeah. the guy that's winning all these NCAA champions to like figuring out your way through the waters of professional running? Yeah, it's definitely tough because I think like when you uh – uh when you have like a year that's so good, it's like so easy to get caught up in that and like be and like you don't want that stuff to change at all. But I think inevitably, like it does, and maybe you. I don't even. I don't even know. It's hard for me to like reflect on that exactly. But I definitely, after you have that success, you think you're just going to keep having that success, and you forget that. I mean, I won all those instant play titles, but I won all of them in my fifth year of college. So it's like I had four years before that where I was in college and I was grinding out and I had injuries and I had struggles and I had a lot of good races as well. But it's just a reality. So um, like that's kind of how I look at this period right now where it's like as a runner, you're going to have like ups and downs. But as long as you are like always learning, as long as you're always like moving in the right direction, um, kind of staying true to yourself, like there's nothing else you can really do. And a lot of this sport is just like about being in the best shape at the right time. And so getting that right is really difficult. But um, yeah, if you take care of like what is in your control and you give it your best shot, 
you can definitely still be disappointed. Like after the Olympics, I was disappointed, but I'll say like I, I wasn't super regretful because I still felt like I I did well. Like I did a lot of stuff right. And I, yeah, I'm happy with like the effort that I put in, even if the results weren't what I wanted. So I was disappointed. I was still, I was still able to like be content with, with a lot of the aspects of it. And so, yeah, I think that's just the reality. And it's like, you got to be able to enjoy uh, that part of the, of your journey if you're going to make it, because like, I want to have like a long pro running career, you know? So obviously it's just not always going to be like easy and it's not always going to have success. I'm not always going to have success, but if I can enjoy like the hard times as well and just keep growing and enjoying it, that's probably like the most important thing to me. Yeah. It's so important to have that like zoom out vision. Like it's hard in the moment to zoom out, but like yeah. in, especially in those disappointments, cause those moments feel so big. But if you can just zoom out and think of like the totality of your career, it's probably yeah. like such a healthy way to look at it. I, I can say that now talking to you, like reflecting, but it's definitely like, I struggle with that a lot of times. And like, yeah, going into the Olympics, I was really like, you, you still like get yourself super in the mindset. Like I'm ready to go like my goal is to make the final and then have success there and I'm, I'm able to achieve that but yeah as soon as I finished um and I took a step back I was like yeah like you know there's been a lot of challenges this year I definitely realized I was like pretty mentally burnt out which I didn't even like realize before the race but after I was like yeah I need some downtime I need to like take some time off and um just step away for a little bit and yeah just like not be obsessed and crazy about running for a little bit it's probably gonna be really healthy Hey friends, I want to thank ZocDoc for supporting this episode of the podcast. Have you ever needed to see a doctor and you search and you can't find one, you wait on hold, you rearrange your schedule, and then you find out your insurance isn't even taken at that doctor's office? There's a solution and that's ZocDoc. You can download the free ZocDoc app, the easiest way to find a great doctor and instantly book an appointment. ZocDoc makes healthcare easy. Whether you need to see a primary care physician, dentist, dermatologist, psychiatrist, eye doctor, or other specialists, ZocDoc has you covered. Go to ZocDoc.com slash another and download the ZocDoc app to sign up for free. Now is the time to prioritize your health. Go to ZocDoc.com slash another and download the ZocDoc app to sign up for free and book a top rated doctor. Many are available as soon as today. That's ZocDoc.com slash another. Okay, back to the show. Okay, so downtime now, and then you're going to yeah. go visit your girlfriend. Yeah. Any fall yeah. plans? Uh, just train, really. So we'll probably be... The, the way it works for the group is like obviously right now we're all kind of ending at different times depending on like um yeah just where everyone's at but we kind of regroup i think like the start of october like everyone kind of has to be here because i think i think the on team is coming for like a bit of a i don't really know what exactly it is like some summit athlete thing but that's pretty much when it's like all right we're all back here training together so yeah you can kind of chill out until then but yeah, October we'll be back here training, and I think we'll just be here in Boulder, just putting in work, just trying to put those weeks together. It's definitely like the fall is different because it is a bit more relaxed. You can't be like so switched on all, all of the year, so it's a very fun time to be here and just like able to, yeah, put in. I mean, I enjoy that type of training a lot as well, like the the tempos and the like the long runs, like the high mileage stuff. I I really enjoy that. So. Um, yeah, that's kind of the only plans right now. Like, I don't think we have any races on the calendar before next year. Maybe we will, depending on how things go. But, yeah, that's kind of it. It's pretty pretty chill right now. Yeah, you can't grind 24-7. No, you can't. Do you miss your family, like, in Australia? Like, do you ever get back? I, I do miss them. I don't get back that much. It's really hard because, well, it, it's such a long trip. And, it like, the jet lag takes a lot out of mm -hmm. you. So it's like... I could only do that trip certain times a year when like the kind of the running allows it, I suppose. Um, and then with COVID because Australia still has like the two week hotel quarantine thing. Like I'm just not going to go do that, you know? So I'm hoping like, I would have liked to go back at the end of this year, start of next year, 
but I'm not sure if the hotel thing is still going to be happening or not. But I definitely miss them a lot. Um, we, we talk on FaceTime quite a lot. Luckily, I've never, like, really struggled too bad with homesickness. I think I've always been, like, in such amazing environments here in the U.S., whether it was at college or now, where it's I'm very happy to be here, you know? So it's not like I'm, like, constantly thinking about home or anything. But actually when I struggle with homesickness the most is, like, right before I go back and I start remembering how much I miss it. Uh, but, yeah, apart from that, I do pretty well. What do you do on holidays? Do you have, like, fr- uh friends that are family basically that you like i don't know thanksgiving or things like that yeah so thanksgiving is my favorite because i always like do something fun for that like i've gone to a lot of different friends houses or like in college we like there would maybe be like four of us who like didn't go home for it because they were from like a couple of my roommates were from washington so they didn't like go back there for it and so we would do like a thanksgiving together and those are always like so much fun uh for christmas i go so my girlfriend She's French American and her parents live in Austin, Texas. So I normally go to Austin. Okay. And, um, so I've been there the last three Christmases, I think. So I go there quite a lot, and I really enjoy Austin as well. So yeah, I get to go around a bit. I don't just sit in my room and be sad. <laughs> it's nice. Well, that's an easy that's an easy trip for Christmas coming from someone who's from Australia, yeah. Boulder to Austin. <laughs> it's not too bad. Yeah. Um, I always say that, like, if you don't live close to family, like, you just have to find friends that feel like family um, for holidays because it can be so lonely if you don't. Yeah, and luckily, yeah, we've been able to do that. So, like, in my house right now, like, obviously, Ollie and I, Ollie and I are from Australia, and then Jordy's from New Zealand. Um, Carlos is, he's from Arizona, but also, like, all his family's in Mexico. He's from Mexico. So, we we are all, like, in pretty similar situations, and so... It is kind of like a big family here because, yeah, we're like the main the main thing that we have for each other, I guess. So good. Um, okay, what's something professionally or personally that you'd like to do that you haven't done yet? Um, I don't really know. I guess win the Olympics or something. But <laughs> no biggie. I, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know if that's a good answer because I feel like that's what literally everyone wants to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't like broken through on the professional scene. So that's kind of like what I want to do. I want to be I want to be a, like a really good pro runner, which is like, yeah, obviously everyone wants to do that. But that's like the main thing that I think about, I guess. Who's someone's career that you look up to? Like that's maybe retired or whatever. In running, it's probably Nick Willis. Mm. Um, he hasn't quite retired yep. yet, but yeah as i said i look at like longevity is probably being like the best indicator of like for me like six like if you're able to have a long career then clearly you really enjoyed it and you like you were able to stay healthy and you had stuff figured out really well and yeah like just the way this sport works is like at the top level like you only get so many opportunities each year to say run a pb or like to like break 13 like there's only i don't know three 5k races a year maybe a couple more but there's not many right so you have to be you have to be in as many of those big races as possible and you know stuff happens like it's not like every year you're going to be available for all them so it's kind of like just like the more years that you can be a pro runner and the more of those great opportunities that you can be exposed to like the most success you're going to have so i look at someone like nick wallace's someone who was able to kind of figure that out and just like he just run at a high level for so long and just yeah, just a lot about like the way he operates. You can tell like he he really 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 enjoys it, and yeah, that's definitely what I want to what I want to try and do. He does. I love that. There's everybody was talking about him like waving to his kids before the race at the Olympics. Yeah, I know he's got he's got that stuff pretty figured out. <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't have any professional goals with with Overcast or Overcrowd or what? What's the video Over, game? Overwatch. Overwatch. Uh, <laughs> I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll maybe I'll. <laughs> become a professional twitch streamer and make a bunch of money playing video games but unfortunately we always we, we actually suck we always <laughs> lose so uh I'm, we're pretty far away from that what's up with that that's my kids like to watch p- other people play video games on youtube that's like a thing it's a massive thing they what make, is up with that that like, looks so boring make a lot of money doing that it's just it's just like any hobby or interest and it's like i don't know it, it's I've been like obsessed with YouTube for a long time, and so 
and like I used to play a lot more video games, so I would watch a lot of people playing video games. I don't know. It's just so entertaining for whatever reason. And then you just get really into like the people's personalities and stuff and you just get addicted to it. I don't know. I couldn't tell you why though. Okay. So tell us about your YouTube then. You have 14,000 subscribers. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, the YouTube thing is really interesting because I like haven't figured it out like at all. Definitely. I mean, you, you are in the, you make content online. Yeah. So you would know probably the most important thing is to like be able to do it consistently, which is like what I have failed at. Because it's, so, it's so hard. YouTube's so, it's such a production. Yeah. I, I committed a big, I mean, and to be fair, like I, I'm not like, it, it's like I jumped into it without really knowing what I was getting myself into because I have literally no experience in the area, but it is something that I really enjoyed. Um, so Pretty much like at the end of last year, I started making videos and I was like, all right, I'm going to try to make a YouTube video once a week because as a runner, it's weird because like you obviously like a lot of your job is as like a, like the, there's the cliche term influencer. Mm. It's kind of like that. It's, it's slightly different, but like a lot of your value to a company obviously can be linked to mm-hmm. the amount of like online clout you have or whatever. So it is like the reality and it's, can be important obviously like a lot of people just like to run and just like hide away which i like to do but um it's inevitable that i think all that online stuff will be is important and will be increasingly important and so i really enjoy youtube like as a consumer of it and i enjoy like making videos and stuff so i was like all right i'll give it a try because um i think it could be a great way for me like as a professional runner to like share my story a bit more as a as a young kid, like I, I liked watching like running people and stuff. I would get really into it. So I was like, if I can maybe like entertain some kids and stuff and make them enjoy running more, then that would be amazing. So I got into it and I did it for about ten weeks in a row originally. But by the end it was just like it just like sucked up so much of my time and energy where I was like, all right, like this isn't sustainable like the way I'm doing it right now. Um, so I had to just like stop it, especially once I got injured and stuff and I was just spending so much time between like cross training and rehabbing. I just didn't, I just fell away because it was always like, it did take up a lot of my energy, but it was always like, obviously a lower priority thing for me. So when I had to do more stuff for my running, it just unfortunately went away. And so now I guess what I would say is like I, I uploaded the last video I uploaded was right before going to Tokyo and that's like my video that I'm most proud of. I'm, I really, really like it. But yeah, I haven't figured out like a way to consistently make content. And so kind of right now, like I'm obviously not really doing anything for YouTube and I but I am like thinking about like how to do something that's easier and like can be consistently done because yeah, that's the reality. Like you have to be able to, to do that and that's how it's going to be its best is something that's consistent. So I do love it, but it just got a little too much for me. I was lucky that I have Nick Harris here in Boulder who's like, he's like being a massive help and he's really good at that type of stuff. So he helps out a lot with it as well. But yeah, right now it's definitely like not a top priority for me, but I, I think it's good to have something that like can complement the running, but I'm still trying to figure out like exactly what that looks like. Yeah. I mean, once a week is a lot. You know, yeah. it's like it's like thinking of the content, thinking of what you're going to video, putting the music in, like doing the post edit. Like it's it's a lot. It's, for sure. Yeah, it's so much work. I do agree with you, though. And I think one of the reasons I've never put things on YouTube so much is because for that reason, you mm-hmm. have to be consistent. And it's like, yeah. whew, it's just yeah. so much. Yeah. And like the response was like so amazing. Like I was so surprised at how positive the reception was because i really didn't know what i was doing but it was pretty amazing like so many people like did enjoy it and like when i would go to races by far it's like the biggest thing that people will come up and say is like hey man i like your youtube video it's like so it is a great thing it's just it's just difficult to do and that's why like not that many people do it really what who are your like fourteen thousand subscribers do you know who anything about your demographics like is this a lot of like college kids who race things like that yeah it i think it's mostly like it's like actually slightly older than i thought it would be because i think youtube has a bit of an older audience compared to say like you know like tiktok or whatever but uh yeah i think it's mostly mostly males some some females mostly males and like mostly like 20 to 35 okay well i mean yeah because you really you're 20 are you 26 
25. Yeah, 25. You like grew up in the YouTube era, you know, like yeah. I'm, I'm like a little like 10 years or more, a little more <laughs> past that. So like yeah. YouTube wasn't big when I was, you know, in high school and yeah. things like that. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like you kind of like grew up right in that era. No, I did. It's like, yeah, it's very different. Like I, I wouldn't need a TV. Like I, I'm completely fine with just YouTube for everything. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. So what you said you do like to read, what is the best, most recent book you've read? Oh man, that's a tough, I have a really bad memory. So I, uh, I can't remember the names of a lot of the books that I read, but I, so I read like before I go to bed every night. Mm. Um, but I kind of made, I guess this isn't a mistake, but I, I've been reading a lot of fantasy stuff like fantasy series and I'm on like the longest freaking fantasy series right now. Like it's like 14 or 15 books and they're really long and I'm on book 11 or 12. So I've literally been reading this series for like probably almost a year. What is it? What's the series? It's called the wheel of time. Okay. It's really good, but it's just like, I'm like looking forward to finishing it. So then I can read, <laughs> so I can read other stuff. And so I read that before bed. Uh, during the day I do read like some other stuff, like more like nonfiction type books but probably my favorite, favorite books that I've read more in that category. Um, one that helps me a lot, like mentally for sport and performance is called Thinking Body, Dancing Mind, okay. which an English teacher gave to me. And it's like about uh, Taoism and like applying it to like sports kind of and business as well, I suppose. So that's really interesting if you're like into like those type of books. Um, and then I like a lot of like the running specific uh books like say like running with the buffaloes or like there's a one on bill bauman i think it's called like bauman and the men of oregon okay those ones are like really really interesting i find that stuff pretty cool and i definitely i like reading that type of stuff a lot because it does inspire me a lot and it always like gets me like really excited to try to be as good as i can be and like yeah do the right stuff so i do like to keep reading that stuff if i can what was the most exciting thing, speaking of excitement, what was the most exciting thing to you at the Olympics, like performance-wise? Um, that's a good question because it was actually weird because being in the Olympics is like the least I consumed the Olympics, like oh, the sure. least I ever have because I was like so focused on my race, uh, going into my race. Like I, I don't like to, it wasn't like I was like going out to the track every night and watching it. Sure. I was like, focus on like what I was doing so I kind of missed a lot of like amazing performances you had a job to do yeah pretty much <laughs> so, and, like even though I was like literally there in the village is almost like it didn't feel like the Olympics was on because like what I'm used to that being is like just the tv is always on and the Olympics is always playing on the yeah, tv like yeah. that's like my experience of the Olympics being on but with that said obviously there were just like so many amazing performances in the athletics what was the most amazing one that I thought um I, I was there watching, obviously, like, Yaka being a Britain win the 1500. I mm -hmm. thought the way that he, like, won that was just so cool. Um, and then, obviously, there's all, like, the world record performances, which are just, like, absolutely, like, out of this world. And um, the women's 800 as well was, like, mm -hmm. crazy. I mean, the Olympics is, like, you could probably say that for, like, literally every race of the Olympics. It's wild. Like, everyone just takes it to a new level, like, every time. And, like, somehow, even though all these athletes you know they're so amazing they still somehow exceed your expectations so it, it's very impressive so yeah i don't really have a single one but those are the things that i kind of found the coolest i'd say yeah i'd say the women's 800 that's been talked about quite a bit the yeah, wo women's four by four yeah yeah very cool. That was pretty cool very cool um okay who is someone fun motivating or inspiring that you would like to have coffee tea or cocktail with um that's a good question as well I, you know, honestly, like, this is kind of, like, a random answer, but probably, like, Picasso. Okay. Because, because or, like, I would probably a lot of different artists, but, like, someone like him, because I find, like, people that work creatively, like, so interesting, because I'm, like, not a big creative person. Obviously, like, making YouTube videos and stuff was, like, that is pretty creative in a lot of ways, but I find that, and my girlfriend is a really good artist, so I find people like that super inspiring because especially like when I watch say my girlfriend work for example like she'll just like do this amazing art like every day and I'm just like what is like what is like motivating you like what is inspiring you to like just create um 
I find that very interesting. And then, yeah, often when you get to talk to someone like that, it's like very interesting and like inspiring. So, yeah, I would like to I would like to sit down with Picasso and and find what motivated him to just like make so much amazing art, I suppose. Does she do that for her job? No, she does it for uh, for enjoyment. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, what is your last message to leave with our audience today? I guess if I was to give any words of wisdom based on what I've experienced to do with running specifically, I would just say uh, to embrace all the obstacles. Because if I look back at my running career, it's always the harder things, the obstacles, which I look at as the most defining for me in terms of what led me then to have success. So, yeah, it's hard at the time, but if you are able to keep the fire alive inside and keep motivated and keep pushing and finding solutions through all your problems, then that's what's going to make you the best possible. And then also just have fun because running is so trivial in a lot of ways. It's like there's no point doing it if you're not having fun. And I think that's easy to forget sometimes. All right, friends, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you, Morgan, for coming on the show. You all go check out Morgan. Tell him congratulations for his first Olympics. You can find him underscore Morgan McDonald on Instagram. You can find me personally on Instagram, Lindsay Hine 626 also on Twitter at Lindsay Hine and Facebook. I'll have another podcast with Lindsay Hine. We have a group over there as well. Would love to have you join us. If you are a parent or someone helping raise kids, go check out my parenting podcast. It's called Why Is Everyone Yelling? If you've been dragging your feet on trying it out, let me just tell you a couple episodes that I highly recommend starting with. I recently interviewed David Thomas all about raising boys. I have four boys myself, so that was super relevant to my life. That's episode 42, a really great episode. Episode 45 with Emily Boucher about fostering independent kids. That's a great one. Um, Actually, in episode 36, I talked with my sister about giving up alcohol And that was a really popular episode. I think it hit home with a lot of people. Um, That show is called Why Is Everyone Yelling? We also have the Up and Running podcast, which is a podcast that shares news and relevant information with the elite and professional distance scene in the running world. We have the Urban Pharmacy. Stacey Heine hosts that where she talks about holistic nutrition and living and some business-minded things as well over there. And then we have the Illuminate podcast, which is a show that just highlights people doing really good work in the world. We would love to have you check them out. You can find Sandy Boy on Instagram, Sandy Boy Productions, and all the show updates are um, over there on that page. So you can learn more over there. Okay, friends, I appreciate you for being here. I appreciate you for leaving reviews, supporting sponsors of the show. All of that matters and means so much to me. So none of it goes unnoticed. Thank you very, very much. All right. And if you want to get in contact with me, if you have suggestions for the show or guests or anything like that, you can email me at lindsay at sandyboyproductions.com. You can also email my assistant, emma at sandyboyproductions.com. If you're looking for coaching for a fall marathon or training plans that are customized or pre-made training plans for half marathons or marathons, you can find information about all that that we offer on my website at lindsayhine.com. Okay, friends, thanks for being here. Have a great Friday, a wonderful rest of your weekend. And as always, I will see you next Friday.